Of course, we still on with the touchline on Y25. A very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. My name is Maxwell Wasika. Time for the fan favorite segment, the fan zone, where we're giving a focus on international football with regards to what has been trending, the matters, transfers, and of course, what is coming up next Wednesday, a pulsating clash. Uh, of course, beating Chelsea Football Club against their rivals as far as English Premier League is concerned, Arsenal in Europa League football. And of course, Arsenal looking forward probably to beat Chelsea to qualify for UEFA Champions League football come next season and leave United to be one of the top clubs in England to play Thursday night football. Of course, joining me is a great panelist to dissect and give their opinion with regards to you know several headlines as far as matters uh, global soccer is concerned. Ian Waga, the social nerd, has been here. Ian, how have you been? I'm good, I'm good, man. Better uh, late than never, right? Yes, I'm happy to be here. Moses Gowi, big man. Yes, Max. It's been a, a minute. It's been a minute. It's good to be back uh, uh, to, to commentate on matters football. You know, football is our own ground, so any opportunity to talk football is always a welcome opportunity. Definitely. So, Robert, you are not here before, man. What happened to you? Oh man, it's uh, those days when a uh, journalist fails to work, man. The matter had run. It was there every yesterday. People were tweeting about it, and I forgot that I live on the road where it's closed. Oh, so traffic snarl up. Traffic snarl up, and man, I don't have a car, so. <laughs> Next time I'm gonna come to rescue, bro. <laughs> yeah. Straight yeah. into what has uh, happened. Uh, your former coach Antonio Conte is off to Inter Milan. Big move for the uh, Italian giants. Yes, uh, definitely. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge move for Inter Milan and I think it's a move that uh, will benefit the club, especially at this time when they are rebuilding. Uh, we all know the quality Antonio Conte possesses. In his two seasons in England, he won a Premier League title and an FA Cup title. So he's a very good coach. So I'm, I'm actually looking forward to Inter Milan performing very well. Uh, maybe they will start challenging Juve for the Italian Serie A. Mose, several clubs are, are managerless and of course and so are managers who are clubless. Of course, as we speak right now, Jose Mourinho is an attached. Max Allegri parted ways with Juventus is an attached and you know, several uh, uh, transfer rumors linking these coaches to various clubs. What do you make of you know the rumor mill so far? Um, obviously the, the rumor mill now it's uh, as, as far as uh, the coaches are concerned. They're mostly linked to Syria clubs. Yes. Uh, Conte just joined Inter Milan to steady the ship while at uh, Juventus. Uh, the previous season, they had finished seventh. Conte came in, won the league. The same thing he did at Chelsea. They performed very poorly, came in, won the league. So next season, we expect a very tough Syria. As far as uh, the available coaches are concerned, um, oh, people tend to link Mourinho with uh, the position at Juventus, given that Max Allegri has left. And if you think of it, the, the only viable option is Mourinho, most obviously, because of his uh, European pedigree. Uh, Allegri won five back-to-back -back titles. To chase him away from that job means that Juventus have their eye on the big cup, that is the Champions League. Oh. And Mourinho is a serial winner in this competition. And it's, it's only logical that Mourinho be given the nod for, for this uh, available position. Yeah. Uh, other coaches who are available, uh, I don't see anyone of the class that... Uh, to fill the position at, at Juventus other than Jose Mourinho. And maybe if Pochettino becomes available, which I don't think Spurs will be willing to let him go. And well, sorry, Robert, I know you have followed the Italian football for quite long and you remember those days of AC Milan and Inter Milan, San Siro rivalry and their standards have drastically dwindled. It's now Juventus who are making headlines, winning uh, Serie A titles consecutively. They have won it, I think, several a few years down I the line, winning know. it. Uh, eight years, eight years running. Do you think Conte joining Italian football will now uh, restore the lost glory of Inter Milan? A team that, you know, our very own McDonald Mariga played for one Champions League with them. It's a big plus for Inter Milan because you look at the history of Antonio Conte in Italy. Because they, when he joined the Juventus, they were actually coming off relegation and they were trying to rebuild and do everything that they could and Antonio Cote came and helped them rebuild and everything that they had to do. But then again, he, w he was called for the Italian job, so he had to leave Juventus, come to Italy for two years and then come to Chelsea. So him going back to Inter Milan, as Ian said, he is the most capable coach who is likely to challenge 
uh, Juventus at their level best which they are because other coaches who have managed to challenge Juventus have not got that far because you realize the next best coach who challenged Juventus was uh, Mauricio, Mauricio Sarri. Sarri when he was at Napoli. He came out with 91 points with Napoli twice he was running the second Run runners up. up not getting to the level where Juventus was so I think Antonio Conte coming there is a big plus but then again the director of football I think Spalletti who was the director of football at Juventus was the one who brought Antonio Conte to Juventus. He is the one currently at Inter Milan and I think he knows that the quality of Antonio Conte when he goes to Inter Milan and what he can do. The thing is, Inter Milan has to go ahead and start buying players yes. who are in the caliber to yes. compete with Juventus Definitely. because you look at Juventus buying the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Diabala, Kule, not Kulebal. The, the caliber of players that Juventus has is not the caliber of players that Inter Milan has. So yes. Inter Milan has to invest in the good players that Antonio Conte can use to challenge Juventus. And of course, uh, as far as matters Italian football is concerned, Cristiano Ronaldo won play of the season just a few months after, you know, uh, leaving Los Blancos of Real Madrid to join Juventus. Uh, Do you uh, think that's the man that, you know, Italian football will require if that he, competition and quality? I think for everyone, I don't even think it was a, a surprise that Ronaldo is yeah. the best Serie A player. I mean, he's, he's arguably the best footballer, one of the best footballers ever to play the game. So my only problem with Juve is uh, I felt like Juve really let him down in the Champions League. Yes. Because him himself, he gave everything he had. He scored very huge goals. He brought them to the semi-finals. Well, so so the, the final he scored, won against Atletico Madrid, that he, was a big plus. Yes. Yes, yeah. and even uh, when in, in the in the in the quarterfinals when all was all was lost, he came in with a hat trick performance to send yes. Juve yeah. to the semi-finals. Yeah. So uh, my problem is uh, there's something wrong with Juve. At some point, they just don't execute, and I I, I think it's not they ca they have very good players, but I don't think they are clutch players. I don't think they are players. Who, other than Ronaldo, where in a big game you can call you can call up to them, and that's why you're seeing uh, Dybala is being uh, linked with a move away from the uh, from Juventus because is he really the player we thought he is? Because in the big stage he's failed to deliver. So I think uh, Juve is a very good team, but they need other players who will be able to come in when Ronaldo has an off day. Another player will be able to come in and execute. Most I don't know whether you read from the same script with the social nerd because when he says that there are no quality and probably world class players at uh, the Turin, what do we refer to people like Chiellini who've been phenomenal for the club? Because uh, from where you sit, what do you think Juve went wrong that led to the elimination from Champions League football and what has been their main undoing? Is it the coach Max leg room they have parted ways with or probably gel and blend? Well, I think Juve have uh, top quality players all, all round. If you look at their defence, it's one of the meanest defence in, in uh, Europe, uh, the top five European competitions. Uh, Giorgio Chiellini, uh, your Dybalas, your Blaise Matuidi, uh, Mira Lempiani, those are top players who would fit in, into any other team. But uh, the success has eluded them in the European competitions. Uh, twice they have managed to reach the finals. Uh, they, they went out against Barcelona and uh, Real Madrid, both Spanish teams. Uh, the other season they, they were unfairly knocked out in the, against Real Madrid when uh, they considered a late penalty that uh, was converted by Ronaldo, who's at Juve right now. So Juventus, I, I think perhaps what they're liking is uh, someone to steer them uh, to the Champions League. The players are there because you can't doubt the quality of players that they have. Arguably, the, the players, they, they have the best players in the Italian league and they'd fit into most of these Premier League teams, uh, even uh, in, in Bayern or PSG, these players could fit in. So, let's see what the next coach comes and does. Uh, this time round, Ajax was there and doing. Ajax had a very good team spirit, they had uh, a very good run in the Champions League and they beat uh, the big teams, so to speak, Real Madrid fall to them, uh, Juventus fell to them. So. I don't think it, the blame is on the players or the lack of quality. I think it's uh, something tough, else. Tough, tough, tough. No, the, 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 my, 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 my it, is, it is these players are. It's like the case with PSG. They are used to winning in Italian football. 
But when it comes to the Champions League, it's a different competition. The teams that you are going to meet are totally different from the way you are playing. You might have the best players in Serie A, the best players in the world. You are winning in your league. But remember, when you come to the Champions League, it's 13 games to that trophy. Yes. It's not 30 games. So a team like Ajax that came this time round and surprised everyone, they know that we are going to every game in 180 minutes. You either knock us out or we knock you out. Yeah, I think the players, I think they come into a comfortable zone. We are the best of the best. We can take you on. Yes. But you get a team like Manchester United, which has been struggling. But the moment they know they are facing Juve in the Champions League, they know these are do or die. The perfect, Manchester wins. The perfect example of what you're saying is the Barcelona and uh, uh, Liverpool, Liverpool games. Yes. Because it is, as you said, the Champions League, a game is 180 minutes. Yeah. So the first half was done. So it was just up to the coach because I, everyone would agree with me that if it was Mourinho who had a 3-0 lead, lead, the tie is over. Yes. So at that point, we have to, bl to blame the coach because Real Madrid went to Ajax. They scored an away goal. Mm -hmm. How did they set up in the second leg? No, we still want to, to steal all of it. But we, we forget the Champions League is very tactical. In its, because, because of its nature being 180 minutes, very tactical. You may not have to play the best football, but you might win the game purely on tactics. But, but, but you see, I think yesterday Manchester United were celebrating 20 years of winning the treble. Yes. But one of the biggest quotes that came out of that was, the coach's work ends at the touchline. Which kind of players are making this team now work? as a team in the game itself. Which kind of players are rising up to work at this? Juventus have Bonucci, have Chiellini in defense. Good for you. You come to a midfield area, you have Diabala. And you, are work, you have Matuidi in that midfield. You have Mandzukic, you have Cristiano Ronaldo. Then why are you not scoring the goals? How do you set up? What do you want to achieve? So for me, it's tactical because if I have a 1-1 one -one, uh, draw away, I will, uh, my only thinking will be, let me not concede this game. Let me flood the midfield. I'm going through anyway. So let me, let me have more midfield players. Let me sacrifice Dybala and have Ronaldo play up front. So it, for what they went for, they went for a win. And it really backfired on them. We're going to speak about something else. A saga that uh, has you know, elicited heated reactions from African football followers. The leading record scorer for Ghana Black Stars, five-time <laughs> African champions, Asamoa Gian. He had announced retirement from football, especially after he was uh, stripped off captaincy. Yeah. And uh, later on, he met the president at the State House and he rescinded his decision. He came back to football. And now, as we speak right now, Moses. He's the general captain, while Jordan Ayu is the captain. Don't you think that's the start of a revolt ahead of the continental shop is in Egypt? Because why do you have someone being given the position that is non-existent in football circles? Um, we, we obviously can't ignore the importance of uh, Asamoah Gyan to the Ghanaian team. Uh, is the overall leading well, that scorer. Work. Is overall leading. I mean, we can't argue against the statistics. Asamoah Gyan is the leading goal scorer in Ghana. He's past his best. So um, the the saga obviously it it brings discord in the team. Uh, it uh, interferes with the with the team unity and uh, with the team gelling together. Uh, Asamoah the, the Andre is a deserving captain. He's contributed as much as Asamoah's contributed to the Ghanaian team but now that politics mixed with football the president had to intervene and now you see the coach the coach hand is tight if you're up here Kwesi up here what will you do uh, the president himself has intervened say Uru Kenyatta intervened says today call back on <laughs> Your hands are tied practically. So but will it that attract sanctions from <laughs> FIFA because of government interference no, 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 and no, political no, no, no. <laughs> that, influence as well? And giving their own opinion and everything. But look at this. Asamoah Gyan statistically, as you have said, is one of the best African players and for Ghana players. But the moment he lost that penalty in 2010, all his statistics went down. <laughs> Same case with Roberto Baggio, the best striker the world has ever seen from Italy. But the moment, what do people remember? This penalty loss against Brazil 
in the 94 World Cup in the US. Ma that's the whole thing. Ma Ma you can Ma the case, yeah, but, but in penalty no, taking, we say there is no exceptional no, expert. No. The case, you can the, the the case with Asamoah like, Gyan is just that the government and the Federation are bruising his ego. They're just making him look good no. and everything. But his past is proud. This yes. guy left playing for Sunderland to go and play in Abu Dhabi. Now, because this is the Africa Cup of Nations, he just wants to come and say that he's the king of Africa Cup of Nations. <laughs> but nothing is going to help. To do. It's just, the way you said it, it's just going to divide that team mm. two parts. Yeah. There is going to be an Asamoah camp, there's going to be an uh, Andre and Quado camp. Yeah. I I, head of the Continental Shop is African Cup of Nations is kicking off in a few days from now as we speak in Egypt and Ghana has been among the favorites for the uh, title. Of course, they are the four African Cup of Nations champions and they have dominated the African football headlines. Do you think heading into the shop is and with what is happening, it will undermine their performance on the pitch? Uh, f first of all, I, I have to say that... Uh, Ghana is uh, this is a very different Ghana side. We we are not we are not talking of the the, the real Ghana players we had back then, yeah. because uh, even when you watch their performance against Arambe Stars and uh, uh, that was not a good performance at all. And I I honestly don't think they are even favourites to win this showpiece. Of course, Senegal is is this, is favour is clear favourites to win this this year's Afcon. So I uh, I think even without the saga for Asamoah Jan, I don't think them going any. Really, they have good players, yes, yes. but I don't see them uh, clinching the Afghan title. For, for the African shop, is for me, I'm going with the Maghreb region that is either Morocco, Algeria, or Egypt. Egypt, those are the teams that can do Senegal can try because of their European influence and everything that they are going to have. But you look even yesterday, yeah. the Africa CAF Champions League final is between Moroccan clubs. These are players who understand African football playing the African continent. So the moment they are going for the Africa Cup of Nations, they know what they want and they know how to play in this terrain. Senegal can try because of their performance at the World Cup, but the Africa Cup of Nations is different. You look at Egypt, they perform well in Africa, they go to the World Cup, they fail. And this time, we can write them off, but when it comes to the Africa Cup of Nations, it's a team you cannot write off. Moses, big game coming up on Monday. That's the championship uh, playoff final pitting John Terry and Frank Lampard. That's Aston Villa against Derby County. What do you make of the build up to the clash? Of course, uh, several people I had spoken to probably were looking forward to a team of Leeds United, you know, joining English Premier League to revive, you know, that that uh, uh, rivalry, especially with the teams like Man United. But it never came to pass. But Aston Villa, Derby County, you expected that? Um, I, I didn't expect that. Uh, as you said, Leeds, uh, it will have been quite a, a story for Leeds United to make it back to the Premier League. Of course, uh, Marcelo Bielsa is a, is a very exceptional, uh, definite. exceptional coach. And uh, what he's done as Leeds is, uh, is uh, visible to see. But then again, Derby County have been knocking on, on the Premier League door for quite some time now. They've been eliminated at the, at the knock of, uh, knockout stages for, I think, a uh, better part of the, of the past three, three or four seasons. Uh, this time round, they've made it uh, to the final against Villa. Villa are a seasoned uh, Premier League team. They know how to do it, of course. Uh, the, the story there is the uh, rivalry between John Terry, a former Chelsea captain, and Frank Lampard on this other side, uh, Derby coach. Both English internationals. Both English internationals, uh, both, both Chelsea teammates, uh, very influential uh, during their play days. But then again, uh, this is one, one match that will be decided in, uh, in 90 minutes, so I, I clearly can't call that. Uh, I'm for Derby to go through myself uh, and uh, it will be quite a story for them to, to make uh, to finally make it to the Premier League. Of course, uh, the financial stakes are also very high. Yes. The tune of, I think, 190 million uh, sterling oh, pounds nice. and that's quite some good money going into the if Premier League. If you win the championship. Yes, if you wow. win the, the, this the, the, the game. It's quite game. ironic it's because the, the win of the game. championship earns mm. much even than the, the overall of win of the Premier League. The Premier. Premier League. Yes. Mm. Wow. It's the richest game in football, as yeah. they call it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, 
Wow, why what? is that? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. 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 They call That's it. why you have to watch Monday Night Football. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, the Sky Bet Championship, and I think the, the TV sponsorship money that comes with it uh, boosted it. And yeah. I, was, I was watching Sky this morning and I saw the, the trajectory of, of that. In 2013, from 2013 to now, the, it's really skyrocketed the amount that players, the, the teams that win Suns. I think it was 90 million mm. in 2013, now it's 190. Uh, so every year it goes up, and I think it's because of That's the broadcast uh, rights. Yes, because of the broadcast wow. rights. Yes, but, but you also even see the, the quality of players that come out of the championship. And yes. championship re teams are really competing with Premier League teams for players. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of money in the championship. Of course, the growth in the Premier League will automatically mean the championship will also grow as fast. Are you talking about Dave, uh, somebody called James Woman United is <laughs> chasing after from Swansea? <laughs> Uh, the same way Robertson left championship to Liverpool and yeah. is one of the left backs, best uh, left backs as we speak right now in the world. So I, d I don't, I don't think we, we we have enough time to discuss yeah. Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester United's problems. <laughs> I don't think we have enough time. Ozona, Robert, what do you have to say with regards to your chase for championship players? <laughs> Man, I'm a journalist. <laughs> Support any club. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> defame me. Live TV. Okay, all right, all right. Away from that. <laughs> Next Wednesday also a big game yeah. will be happening. Chelsea against Arsenal. What do you make of the stakes? Well, I think the biggest conversation that has come out of that one is that. Uh, the best Mkhitaryan. democracies in the world still have problems that Henrik Mkhitaryan will not be traveling to Baku to play in that uh, Europa League final. And it would have been good for Mkhitaryan to play in another final because he won it in 2017 with Manchester United. You have another chance to play with Arsenal. You can go ahead and win it. But I think it is going to be a very, very good game. Arsenal will be giving goodbye to the likes of Ramsey. Mkhitaryan, Chelsea might be giving goodbye to Eden Hazard, but it's a game I cannot predict because this season there has been two in the Premier League. Arsenal wins, Chelsea wins, so it will be a tough and good game to watch. I've seen several people, especially on Twitter football uh, followers, uh, attributing Mkhitaryan's predicaments to UEFA for their lack of putting in place concrete security measures. Do you think it's their blame, really? Yeah, of course, UEFA you you is to blame, yeah. absolutely. They, they know the situation in Armenia. If you're yeah. going to stage a... Football is for, for everyone. And if you're going to stage a competition where people are expected to attend, that country has to be friendly enough for everyone yes. to, to, to be able yeah. to attend that match. So uh, in this case, if you are of Armenian descent, they deny you passports. Of course, the uh, the... the the embassy, the, the Armenian UK, and the, the Azerbaijan embassy in the UK, they said Mkhitaryan can go, but then what, what security are you guaranteeing him? Yes. We've seen a lot of pitch invasions recently where players are attacked on the pitch. And uh, given the relationship between the two countries, I think UEFA uh, really had there. If you're going to stage a competition that is all-inclusive, you have to be able to accept anyone to come in. Because yeah. it's not only the players who are Yes, trouble, even the fans, the fans, yeah. the fans yeah. are having problems accessing. Objectively speaking, uh, so it's Ian, a uh, this football body, CAF, UEFA, FIFA, are they eligible enough to intervene in the political tension related activities? Yes, uh, um, my, biggest concern, my biggest concern is definitely there's a lot of politics in football. Yeah. And uh, you saw uh, even be when the FIFA scandal happened and uh, the amount of payments people have been taking to. And uh, right now I think there's even a, an, an investigation for, there was an investigation for the Qatar World Cup claiming yeah. some money was exchanged yeah. for, for people to host. And I think uh, that is what is messing football up. Yeah. There's so much money being taken and it's largely just corruption. Uh -huh. And I think yeah. Yes. On politics, sports transcends everything. Sports transcends politics, it transcends everything and everything. You saw, I think, it was in the Munich in 68 where we had the black armor in sports. And you can see even up to today, when you do a Nazi salute, it becomes a problem in sports. But then again, all these federations, like, they have their motto, like the Olympic motto, the football motto, and everything. You need to get a sport into a conducive environment that it can transcend and communicate against everything. Right now, what the UEFA did with staging the UEFA in Baku was actually tell people 
that we still have got ethnic tensions in Eastern Europe, in most of these European countries, which were formerly colonized by the, Sov the former Soviet Virginia. Union. So you realize that up to the moment, the problems of the Soviet Union, divide and conquer in Soviet Union, is still troubling up to today. So the good thing is the world has known that these European democracies that everybody says that are good off and they are better off and everything is good with them, those democracies have problems. And for now for football, it's a plus for them because you have ignited that conversation. But for the player and the fan, you have made him not to go and enjoy the game the way he's supposed to enjoy it. And again, and again, I think football always has a responsibility to challenge uh, inequality and uh, uh, discrimination. When you see Raheem Sterling standing up against racism, yes, it's f because of the platform he has, because of football, he can talk to this uh, about these things and people can listen. Mm, right. And this is the same uh, conversation that has come to the fore in the, with the situation between Armenia and Azerbaijan, uh, and Azerbaijan, and the sort of relationship between countries. We we see Palestinian players and uh, is in the Israel, Israel League. So these are some some of the things that football leadership should stand up to challenge the inequalities and discrimination that still persist in the in the game yes. uh, because uh, as we say the beautiful game uh, has done a lot to unify us uh, whenever there are tensions even during political campaigns people organize football yes. matches people come together it's a symbol of uh, unity it's always a symbol of unity yes. as happened in south africa black players uh, during apartheid, the apartheid yeah. so football always has that role to play to challenge uh, these issues. Fair enough. And uh, a lot of Kenyans looked forward to 2022 World Cup in Qatar having 48 teams, probably to boost Kenyan chances of making it through. But now it's not happening because the two countries, as confirmed, will be participating. I think uh, the current FIFA president, Gianni Fatino, has been taken off by wanting more money in their pockets. That's why they are spoiling the World Cup. 32 teams is the cream de la cream of football. 48 teams is getting teams that are mediocre to go to the World Cup. <laughs> the same thing that is happening in the Africa Cup of Nations. We're having 24 teams. Teams are getting into the Africa Cup of Nations without the quality of them getting into the Africa Cup of Nations. 16 was good enough. The best of the best of African football competes at the grand stage of them all. Now we are in 24. The moment the World Cup say that the, we are going to 48 teams, comes here in Africa, started saying, yeah, we can even have a 32, 32. team Africa <laughs> Cup of Nations. So we are getting teams like Kenya going to the Africa <laughs> Cup of Nations, yet we don't have the quality to play in the Africa Cup of Nations. So 30, let it be 32. Yes. When you start seeing 48, prove to us that the 48 teams that you are bringing to the World Cup deserve to be in the world but cup. even as we speak about the, the world cup the one that happened in russia uh, witnessed a situation where several heavyweights didn't qualify like netherlands the orange so which means probably 48 will have given an opportunity to no 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 no, 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 no. I think most at, of at, the giants at, making at, it at through 32, at 32 we know if netherlands they don't make it to the best of 32 then, then it means it will be competitive yeah yeah made it yeah made it yeah, to, the, the, to the world cup that when, is it. When you, when you expand mm -hmm. the, 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 the number of teams in these co competitions, obviously you dilute the quality of football. How many matches would you watch in a 48-team in a World Cup that are of the caliber that we come to expect of the World Cup? Yes. This is a, a global competition that we associate with beautiful football. You don't want to watch... You don't want to watch Kenya, Kenya versus Malaysia. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Again, it's Haiti. Yeah. Yeah. In a World Cup. In a yeah. World Cup. Yeah. You see, and, and look at the 48-team perspective yeah. in... Uh, in Qatar has not gone through because of tensions between these Middle Eastern countries. You remember the 48 uh, proposal by Infantino at the FIFA Congress was it will be hosted in different countries, then it, the final comes on to one country. So mm -hmm. like in the 2026 World Cup, which is I think in the US, Canada and Mexico. Mexico yeah. So are, we are going to have three countries hosting one showpiece. That's like one northern region in America that is going to host the, mm -hmm. the World Cup. So. Before we get into the fight to the knockout stage of the 16 team, there it's more of a league format for you to get into the best 16. So it's a month of a circus of football. But the best 32 teams is just goes to one team. You go to Germany, you realize that you put your best eight groups, the best 
two are going to qualify to the last 16, get the quarterfinals and go go. But you are going to give us a round robin format of a league format of the game, come back here, start the knockout stage. Who's going to yeah, do all yeah. that? Uh, and you, you are seeing even the confusion with the UEFA Nations League. I mean, uh, p people don't, don't even understand what, what what's going on. Yeah. Uh, and right now, all this is. Is it a replica of. No, no. All this is because Europe. of money. No. All this is because of money. Yeah. FIFA wants more money. And the, the only thing they know how to get this money is bring on more teams, add more time into this thing so that TVs can come in, uh, sponsors can come in for a very long time and make money. Because yeah. FIFA at the moment, the most money they make is from the sponsorship deals that they have and the TV revenues that they have and they get collections. So let's wind up with the transfers. I know you are. I saw you are very happy when uh, Thogan Hazard uh, finally moved to Borussia Dortmund alongside Julian Brandt. So far, what, which other transfer move has impressed you? Um, uh, first of all, as a, as a, as a fan of uh, Borussia Dortmund, as I'm sure many football fans are. Uh, uh, th them handling their business uh, very early in the in the transfer window is good. Uh, we, we've seen Togan Azar has joined them, uh, Nico Schultz have joined them, Julian Brandt and have joined them. So uh, it's it's a very good move considering that uh, we are tired of seeing uh, Bayern Munich win the Bundesliga. Uh, so we think this time with the with the amount of reinforcements that are coming in, we hope that. Uh, uh, definitely we'll see Borussia at the top. With other transfers in, in mind, uh, uh, as a Chelsea fan, uh, I'd like to state very clearly that uh, we don't want Felipe Coutinho. We don't want him. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want him. I think Man United can take him. Uh, we don't want that guy. Uh, we do. <laughs> Man United have been linked with almost Everyone, Gareth Bell, Felipe Coutinho, you know Anton Griezmann, this particular morning, uh, Sky Sports reported about that particular move. No, uh, I think uh, <laughs> Manchester United with Mino Raniola is using Manchester to sell players. That's why you hear that uh, Griezmann is being linked to United. And then then Barcelona will take him. Yeah, so at, at a it, higher it's just price. amping yeah. the player's price tag. Mm -hmm. that when he's linked to Manchester United, his value will go up but at the moment i like the way manchester is doing their business they are going for raw and top talent but right now you need proven <laughs> and experienced no, no, players to revive your winning standards because proven and experienced has failed united look at what pogba is doing first yeah but i feel i feel to understand united uh, supporters supporters frustration with paul pogba Paul Pogba has been the, the best player this season in terms of goals in terms of his contribution on the pitch and now you have to, to chase him away again. Yeah, uh, because you are not performing to the level best that United wants you to perform. But P Paul Pogba is not a goal-scoring midfielder. I mean, yeah, how many, I mean, what, what, what else can look, Pogba do? He has the most goals. You have scapegoating Pogba. Yes. No, no, for no, the, no, for the, all the other weaknesses in the, the Your English no, players, no, no. first yeah. of all, are very, it's very... It's not only Pogba who has not been performing. Ashley Young was also told off. They are not been performing. Phil Jones, it's because... He's the standout player he's the in standout this sport. Player, yeah. There's no day you'll compare But he's West standing to out, Barcelona. though. He's standing he's out. He's standing out. out. United players play with attitude. And you turn out for every game. Pogba does not turn out for every game. That's why most Manchester United supporters are of the question, how come the player that stands out in every game is going, a player that stands out in one or two games is staying? It's a, just because the coach wants to build the team around Paul Pogba. So first and of all, yes. if we remove uh, Pogba's goals and an assists, I think United are like 13th or 14th. Yeah, let them stay there. Get the best players <laughs> to get you out of that. Team. So as a United supporter, <laughs> whom would you want to sign? Oh, Gareth Bale. Now, now you see those are other mediocre players who are not <laughs> performing who <laughs> try to come to United. This guy is undecided. Moses, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, as Arsenal supporter, probably would, would you, your preference. They're, they're, uh, given that 
Arsenal stated we have around 40 million to spend <laughs> <laughs> during this market. So I think for Arsenal, the best options will go for a mostly free transfer. And uh, there are very quality players available. We have uh, Adrian Rabi with his situation at PSG. He's available for, for free. Uh, I doubt whether he'd be willing to come to Arsenal given the quality that he has. We have uh, players like Yasin Brahimi uh, or Porto. Uh, a very decent <laughs> player. Uh, we have other other players like Umtiti at Barcelona. His situation is unsure. The defense. Rafael Varane is also leaving. Uh, I'm not or sure will stay. the situation around Varane. That's I a saw some, probably some, will stay with Zinadine. Yeah, I saw some issues around Sergio Ramos wanting to leave. Yes. We'd, we'd welcome Sergio Ramos. <laughs> <laughs> For, yeah, for me, you for me, a good defensive yeah, uh, for very yeah. experienced defender and yeah. uh, be able to really show up that has an defense that's uh, really leaky. For me, my my my, my, sh my shopping list of course will have uh, Nicolas Pepe. I think everyone is linked with him at this point. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't mind the late, but I know chances are he won't come to the bridge. But uh, I would like and he has not been uh, mentioned that the NL rumors with the bridge still mm -hmm. been Barcelona, Barcelona you know, yeah. Liverpool as well. Barcelona. Yeah, yeah, Liverpool too. Yeah. Yes. So mostly Nicolas Pepe and Lava Jovic in there yeah. because uh, we we are we are kind of rebuilding. We need a centre forward. We we just tied down Giroud to another deal. We've tied down <laughs> David Luiz. <laughs> We've tied down Willy Cabale. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, it's been a fantastic show this particular Saturday and chilly afternoon. Atline has been the show on Y254. My name is Max Wasika alongside Robert Osora and gentlemen here and welcome to the social mad. Alongside Moses Goy, who are joining us for the fan favorite segment, the fans on to dissect about yeah, matters yeah, international yeah, football yeah, and give yeah, their yeah, perspective yeah, yeah, yeah. with regards to what is trending. Let's again do this next Saturday, same time, same place, to our super crew for doing an amazing job. Bless. And of course, let's head to RFUA grounds for. Uh, the Enterprise Cup finale, Cabras Rugby Football Club against Impala Saracens. Then tonight, Barcelona against Valencia in Copa del Rey final. Enjoy and have a fantastic weekend. Bless.